What's going on, everyone? This is Mr. Flores with The Cheese is Good, Episode 3. Special tonight is the NCAA men's final prediction. Uh, right now we're 2-0. Uh, we got the uh, Iowa girls winning, but UConn girls covering the spread. And we said uh, also Iowa men's men would beat um Actually, we're 3-0, basically. Uh, we said Iowa men would beat NC State um, just to go with the money line. And we did say UConn would cover the spread against um, – um, Alabama, which they did, so that's three and zero. So now we have the uh, the men's finals tonight, which is uh, Purdue and UConn. The the odds right now, the money line, it, the total points line is one hundred forty four. It was one forty eight. It's now one forty four. So it's come in four points. So that's telling me, and the spread is six and a half. That's telling me that they're expecting a tighter game, which I was predicting because if I had a parlay. And if I was in Vegas or if you know someone, this is the bet I would look at right now. I would look at uh, a parlay. And uh, what's up, parlay? No, just, <laughs> and I would say UConn outright, outright win. That's one. But also I think I will cover the spread if it's still six and a half. If the spread starts to come in, if it gets below five, I'm not, I'm not doing that bet. Um, I want the extra one and a half points. As a matter of fact, I may even buy a point from six and a half to seven and a half and have that in a parlay. Um, that's the bet that I would do um, with the Iowa and um, uh, men's finals, Iowa, and as well as uh, UConn. It's going to be a great game. Um, I predict that that UConn is the, has the better team. UConn has a bone to pick. They can taste it, the back-to-back. Um, they're playing with a chip on their shoulder. Instead of feel, instead of them playing, uh, what you know, as if they're entitled, I don't see that with UConn. I'm very well coached. Both teams are very well coached. So just because I say UConn is very well coached, does not mean that Iowa is not. Um, I think Zach Eady out of Iowa is a bona fide top ten pick, even though his game is not suited for the NBA. You still got to look, look at picking him, um, just in case he adds an outside shot. Like uh, he could be a better version of Brooke Lopez. Right, that's at Milwaukee Bucks, so he's gonna go top ten. Um, I think the guard play for UConn would be the difference. Normally in championship games, or we get to this caliber of the teams, guard play historically has made the difference um, because the trenches gets you to that the last few games. The guard play takes you over, right? And I think the guard play in UConn is is, is better. Um, another topic I'm gonna cover today. Because uh, this is going to be another one of those 20, 15 to 20 minute podcasts, short and sweet. We'll break it up and put the and, and put the uh, the prediction segment in the videos as well. Um, but this is a live version. We're going to cover today, um, like I said, the the, the, uh, the finals. Also, I'm going to cover John Calipari from Kentucky to Arkansas. What I think about that, and then I'm also going to cover the lifestyle aspect, Bitcoin at all time highs at seventy two thousand. Um, so. Back to the game, um, Iowa versus UConn. UConn, I look at them not uh, not right win it. If I had a, a a dog in the fight in terms of one bet instead of a parlay, I would say Iowa to cover the spread, but I buy a point and get it from six um, six point five to um, to seven and a half. Um, if you got a lot of money, get to fucking ten. I don't think they get beat by double figures, right? But if they win, if if Purdue wins, you know, and I'm saying Iowa, I mean Purdue, my fault. Jesus Christ. Um, Purdue men's team. So anyway, uh, someone just corrected me there. <laughs> Funny, um, but that is that is what. Uh, now let's talk about this. Uh, what well, that's what I think. That's what things gonna happen. I think Garpa is gonna win it for UConn, and uh, I thought they've been the best team all year long. Um, I do think Purdue is peaking at the right time. Um, I think I think it was good that UConn got tested a little bit versus Alabama. Alabama played very spirited. Um, nothing to lose. Um, NC State played with nothing to lose. They didn't have as many weapons as Alabama, um, ironically. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a great game. Um, if there's any first-half props, I would say uh, less than three points um, is the difference. I mean, like, the first half is, is butterflies. I don't think no one comes and blows the other one out in the first half. These teams are too good to get blown out. All right, it's gonna they're gonna it's gonna be a filling out process. And I think the first half is a boring half compared to the second half. It's gonna be exciting. First half could be good, but it's gonna be boring compared to the second half. That's what I think is the second half game. Uh, for this next segment, a uh, little five minute segment, I'm gonna go to John Calipari, going from Kentucky, 
uh, to Arkansas. Here, here's what I think. Um, I think John was in trouble. He had the number one recruiting recruits again, right? They had um, DJ Wagner, um, Shepherd Kid, great backcourt guy. They had the guy, another guard. Um, I forgot, I forgot what the other guard's name was. He's a pro. That's literally three pros in the backcourt. They had Justin Edwards, that's a pro forward. That's four pros. They had another person somewhere that's a pro. Um, I think that when you have four to five pros, you can't go. When did they go out? They got in the first round. Um, you can't have. You can't go out where, where they went out at. You just can't. Um, you know, here's the thing. Kentucky's like, hey, we're not going to have to owe you $33 million. Um, Cool. Uh, you know, we were looking to move on anyway. Um, you, We told you that. That's why you found your deal. We gave you time to go find your deal so it's not egg in your face, John Calipari. John Calipari found Arkansas, which has it. If you go back to Arkansas days um, with Nolan Richardson as coach, you know, they had traditional ba- tradition in terms of basketball. You know, they won a national championship. They've been in the finals, lost one as well. Um, or did they did they win one under Nolan? I know they were in the finals with Nolan and Corey Beck, right, as a point guard. Um, but nevertheless, um, I think it's a good it's a smart move by John because he's going to get canned. Kentucky was telling him, "Yo, you're out of here." It's like you can't have a number one. You know, you haven't been. If you think about it, I think John Wall and Anthony Davis was the last time that Kentucky was in the finals, and that was what fucking nine, thirteen years ago. If that, if you go look at how long have John Wall and Anthony Davis been in the NBA, right? Um, so, you know, Kyle is like, "Look, I'm gonna hit can. I'm gonna save egg in my face." Kentucky tells him, "Listen, we're gonna push you out." We're going to give you time to find your deal. They didn't think that he was going to find his deal right in the conference at SEC. <laughs> they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't think that. I could tell. Um, but, you know, you got to understand, it's like you have a, a, a top class, the number one and the number two and the number five, three of those five kids out of high school and you're, and you're you know, and probably and Shepard was top fifteen or twenty, so four kids were blue chip, and you go out in the first weekend at NCAA, and this is like you haven't been to the promised land, and you know since um, two thousand and nine I'm reading now, um, and then you know twenty twelve was the national title, um, um, twenty twelve was twenty twenty four, that's twelve years, you know eleven if you want to just say um, take take back a year, right? What is a Janet Jackson song? What have you done for me lately? You know, so Kyle probably hadn't done anything. Um, he had to do that deal. He had to escape it. Um, and, you know, um, I don't know what Arkansas is going to give him. They're probably going to overpay, unfortunately, because they need it, they need it for the program. You know, so they're probably going to overpay. Um, now, let's talk about – that's my that's my take in the second segment. That's my take. They're going to overpay. Um, he, he did what he had to do. He got out of there. got out of Kentucky. Kentucky didn't want him. You know, let's regroup. Let's move on. Um, what I can say about – I'll say this about Kentucky basketball. This is what I thought about. Um, they have a lot of tradition. They have a ton of NIL money, ton of money. And Kentucky basketball feels that, look, we just got to get the right coaching here that we can sort of influence as well. And the coach is going to turn his eye – you know, to how we conduct business here in Kentucky. And we expect to be in Final Fours. We expect to be um, in um, every single year the Elite Eight. We expect to have top recruiting classes. And can the coach give us that? You know, that's what they want. Um, oh, hey, Blue Devil, how you doing? <laughs> Blue Devil is one of my gamers. Um, he's just um, catching me doing the uh, the cheese is good episode three. This is episode tri- three, everyone. Um, anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, that's what I think. So that's Kentucky. Um, good good luck to John Calipari. Um, hopefully he takes care of his assistants. You know they've taken care of him. Um, he does need to do that because there's a lot of skeletons probably going to come out. You know, um, in terms of what was going on at Kentucky, in, in case he doesn't. Um, now let's shift to the third segment here. On um, the first segment was a was the uh, 
was the uh, the NCAA finals game tonight, UConn against um, Purdue. And I was saying Iowa. Forgive me, Purdue. I was thinking Iowa because Caitlin Clark. Uh, UConn will beat Purdue, um, but but Purdue will cover the spread. Um, buy a point if you can. That's the bet. Uh, we just talked about John Calipari going to Arkansas from Kentucky. And now we're going to talk about Bitcoin at all-time highs. Um, it hit 72 today. Um, you know, crypto is something that I, that I felt when it came back in to 20,000, 25,000, that was going to be the floor and it was going to go test all-time highs, which is done. So now we have a halving coming up, right? Um, the question that everyone asks me always, is Bitcoin going to go to 100,000? Is Bitcoin going to go to 150,000? I think so. Yes. Is it going to go there this year? No. Could it be there next year? It could be, but here's what I do. I do predict next year. Next year is the recession that we're supposed to have this year. They got the presidential election going on, all right? You're not going to get a recession. They want to be they want to get be back in office, okay? So they're going to do everything they can, throw any kind of money at the situation, stop market whatever to stay in office. They're going to allow a reset next year, especially the first half of next year. That's probably going to be the best time to buy Bitcoin unless you're on a dollar cost average right now. I do see it going to 120 um, within the next two years, maybe 2026. Um, it can get there earlier. Um, and But if you look at it, where is it, 72 and, a, and another 50,000 50, uh, 50, um, handles, um, it's at 72,000 now. You know, that's a 80% return, right? So... If you can hold on to it, you know, understand it could back test. Uh, it's been back testing 60, correct me if I'm wrong, 62,000, 64,000, that whole range back testing. And what it is, what it's doing is it's testing the breakout from the previous all time high or the previous collapse, right? Because it reached that area, 60 to 66,000, and then it fell all the way down to 20,000. So then it pushed back up there and then it's extended. And so it did the last few weeks, it's back testing. So I would love for it to back test this whole summer, even after the halving that's coming up here in April. Um, and they're saying, oh, you're going to get a correction. What if you just get more back testing? So, you know, what it's doing is it's forming an, a higher floor. Uh, I would like that. That's very bullish, right? Um, but, I, you know, that's what I think. With Bitcoin, you have to. Now, here's another thing uh, Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could own either one of those, right? Um, I do, but yeah, I, I, I see Bitcoin doing doing what it does. Um, I don't see, I don't see if you can, if you ha if you can buy it at forty five to fifty thousand index, then something else is wrong. Or e either something else is wrong, or someone with trillions of dollars or gazillion billions of dollars want it in. And they want it at a lower price. The point of the matter is, it ain't gonna stay there. It ain't gonna stay there. Um, what's interesting is like when you say, um, "Would you put your money in Bitcoin or would you put it in, in AI?" I say you split it, right? Have some in AI. You have Plantier. You have Nvidia. Um, um, you know, Apple back testing one forties, one fifties is a good back test to get back into Apple. Um, then you have Bitcoin. It's been back testing the the sixty thousands. Um, it's at seventy two. I think it went to. I think it's back to sixty nine. But that's fine. It, look, if if you think about it, if it's not going to sixty sixty one, if it's back testing the middle sixty thousands, and it's going creeping high every every time up, it's creeping a little bit higher over seventy thousand. All that is is making a higher low and a higher high, right? Um, so that's just chart work. That's chart work. Um, or aliens for real. Um, <laughs> eight, okay, so someone in chat just said, or aliens for real. Um, sure. Uh, sure they are for real. Why not? I mean, why, why would I think that, I'm not getting off topic here, why would I think that we're the only people, only beings on Earth, or in this universe, right, uh, of higher intelligence? No, I don't think that. I think everybody just, I think there's some communication channel out there. But um, back, to, back to what we're talking about, back to Bitcoin. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, now the RSI, here's another thing. The RSI um, on Bitcoin is going from bear, about to switch over to bullish. Um, let me sh actually show a picture here if I can. Uh, let me see this. Uh, I'm going to draw a little face here. Copy image here. All right, there we go. 
uh, let me see if I can, there we go. If I can show y'all where in the Bitcoin is going from, from bearish to bullish, it is going to be, let me see this, let me share this real quick, a window, there we go, watch this. There you go right there. So right there I gave you, I've given you the MACD, right? It's about to cross over um, from bearish to bullish. So now's a good time to buy. Um, anytime in when it's red bearish is the time to do your dip buying. When it's green is the time to take your profits or let it ride. Um, but there's a chart work right there. And I put a little funny face there. <laughs> but no, it's going higher. Um, that's the RSI as well. Um, so it's not overbought. So there's a little free chart work for everyone that's wondering, should I get into Bitcoin or not? Yeah, yeah there you go. It's fine, you know. Um, now, back to, that's the chart work for Bitcoin. Back to what we're doing here. Let me let me stop screen sharing. All right, cool. So anyway, um, hopefully y'all enjoyed this short and sweet podcast. It's only meant to be 20, 25 minutes. Just a few topics covered. I break down each five-minute segment and put it out on the regular video um, as well um, for everyone over the next coming days. But definitely um, tonight, UConn wins. Um, Purdue does cover the spread, but by a point, the parlay is UConn, is Purdue covering the spread, UConn winning. Um, the, the money line is, was 148.5. It's now 144. So the money line is coming in. So I expect the tighter game, which I predicted. That's why the 6.5 spread, you know, is sexy in a way. Um, there's not enough money coming in either. That's why only one of the betting lines have changed versus the other. Um, the other one is... Um, um, the other topic, what was the only other topic was? Oh, John Calipari from Kentucky to Arkansas. He had to make the move. He's going to be fired. He had to make the move. Um, you know, you can't be at four guys, four blue chip guys, um, another guy, so, um, five pros on the team. You got in the first weekend in the NCAA tournament. You haven't been back. You haven't won the finals or been in the finals since, since 2012. That's 12 years. Um, 11 years, maybe, 12 years, yeah. Um, you know, so it's just, what have you done for me lately? And Bitcoin, 72,000. Look, it's make, I just showed you the chart. It's making lower highs. If you want me to show you the chart again, I can, but I, don't, I should need to. But it's making lower highs. It's about to do a crossover from from um, bear to bullish. There it is right there. It's about to cross over from bear to bullish. So now's the time to do your do your dollar cost averaging, you know, over the next 24 hours. Um, and, and do it every single month, you know. Um, other than that. Uh, thanks everyone this is episode three the cheese is good next time i'll probably have a host but i'm in new york city still on vacation giving y'all some some content um uh, wife he's chilling um uh, other than that mr floor 69 in twitch as well as twitter mr floor 69 and asher clan tv uh, which i uh, we own um is the host uh for many of the podcast mr floor's podcast with adult stars and also will be some sports figure this one right here the cheese is good is a brand new one around sports and lifestyle different kinds of things different kinds of topic if you like listening to me and other people we're going to talk what we talk and we're not going to hold our we're not going to hold our tongue or anything like that all right peace out